hello students welcome to my channel light up knowledge and welcome to today's video in today's video we will be covering anaphora which is rhetorical device before moving on further i would like to say that this topic is very important from the perspective of net ugc english literature and gate and the exams of state pcs which relates to the first grade and the second grade exams as well uh, we'll be learning this topic from its meaning associated glossary and the examples drawn from the most celebrated authors in the history of english literature so it is a request to my students to completely watch this video as a part miss can cause an incomplete understanding of the topic which i'm sure no one wants so without any further ado or delay let's jump right into the video so basically anaphora is a rhetorical device so basically when we consider something as a rhetorical device what does that mean let's understand it let's understand what does a rhetorical device mean a rhetorical device a persuasive device or a stylistic device is a technique that an author or a speaker uses to convey to the listener or a reader a meaning with the goal of persuading them towards considering a topic from a perspective using language designed to encourage or provoke an emotional display of a given perspective or action so when you use a rhetorical device or a persuasive device or a stylistic device what you want to convey you want to convey to the listener okay or a reader and what are you trying to convey you are trying to persuade means enforce towards certain topic and you are using such language uh, uh, that helps you to um, enforce or provoke an emotional display and um, that emotional display leads to a, a a particular action or a perspective so basically a uh, each rhetorical device is a distinct tool that can be used to construct uh, an argument or uh, an existing argument more compelling more enforcing more persuading so basically any time we try to inform or persuade or argue with someone we are engaging in rhetoric so even if you had an emotional reaction to a speech you can say or that change your mind about an issue after hearing a skilled debater's rebuttal so here we experience rhetoric means persuasion what is anaphora so basically we now know that anaphora is a rhetorical device so now what is anaphora so it is a rhetorical device involving the repetition of a word or a group of words in successive clauses so basically when you repeat a word or a group of words in the beginning of a clause okay and that uh, that word or group of word come successively in uh, each clause uh, in the written prose or the uh, the stanza in a poetry so that is anaphora right so it is the repetition of a group of first group of words or word in the beginning of a stanza or prose it is often used in a ballad so it is used in a ballad and it is used in a song and also in oratory so oratory is when you uh, publicly deliver a speech very effectively so it is used in oratory also and in sermon sermon is a religious lecture but it is also very common in many literary forms in english understand anaphora through one of the most celebrated remarks from uh, the field of english literature that is uh, chaucer's troilus and cecile and the example goes like this swish fine hath love this troilus for love swish fine hath all his green worthiness swish fine hath is a state real above swish fine hath his lust swish fine hath is noble swish fine hath is false worldles world's brutalness and thus began his loving of cecile and i have told and this is this wise he did so basically to give the context of this um, uh, we go like this that firstly it is an example of anaphora because the first group of words is repeated in successive clauses and to give the context to this so basically this work recounts the love story of troilus who was the son of trojan king priam and cecile widowed daughter of the deserter priest calchas so the poem moves in leisurely fashion with introspection and much of what would be now called as psychological insight dominating many sections to this so basically this uh, happens to be one of the best examples or one of the examples of chaucer's troilus let us consider another example and uh, this example is from the charles dickens the uh, a tale of two cities which is a prose 
इट वॉज द बेस्ट ऑफ टाइम्स इट वॉज द वर्स्ट ऑफ टाइम्स इट वॉज द एज ऑफ विजडम इट वॉज द एज ऑफ फुलिशनेस इट वॉज द इपोक ऑफ बिलीफ इट वॉज द इपोक ऑफ इनक्रूडिलिटी इट वॉज द स्प्रिंग ऑफ होप इट वॉज द विंटर ऑफ डिस्पेयर वी हैड एवरी थिंग बिफोर अस वी हैड नथिंग बिफोर अस वी वर ऑल गोइंग डायरेक्ट टू हेवन वी वर ऑल गोइंग डायरेक्ट द अदर वे सो हेयर यू कैन क्लियरली विटनेस दैट दीज the first three words it was the these are repeated in successive clauses and therefore it becomes um, uh, an example of anaphora so now uh, i will give you the context of uh, a tale of two cities by charles dickens so basically a tale of two cities is a novel and it is about a french doctor menet who has been in 18 year long imprisonment uh, in uh, paris and his release to live in london um, you know and uh, with his daughter lucy whom he had actually never met so this story set against the condition uh, of the french revolution and the reign of terror during uh, those times so the, that was the context i hope you understood what uh, anaphora is and if you did please like share and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you get regular up, uh, you know information about my videos and i will link all the important details in the description box